Hello everyone! To the question, will I ever cover the lore of Final Fantasy XIV as extensively as I've done it with Warcraft over the years? I simply don't know yet. I'm still very early in the game and I want to enjoy all of it first. But that's not to say that certain things don't massively stand out. Certain things that just get the itch going to make a video, to talk about and share what gets me excited about the game. One such thing is how little puzzle pieces conversations, things that you might not notice at first glance, how they can come together to tell a full story, and they actually play a pretty big part in your main scenario questline. The Warrior of Light is not the only one that lives and breathes in this world. Characters go through their own things as well, they end up in different phases, in different moments, have different dialogue. I really hope that at the end of the video you might make some connections that you've never seen before. Like the time when we made our way to our very first dungeon, right at the start. Just outside of Sestasha, we find Add Up Your Heart and our party of fellow adventurers. There's Liovana, Pajorayo and Avera. Apologies for my pronunciation. At first glance, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of substance here. They're making fun of Edda for being so slow. They're picking on their healer. Avera isn't too happy with us being there either. The job that we're going in for, it should have been theirs alone from the start. They shouldn't have gotten us involved. And why the hell did Edda take so long? The only things that she's really good for is the contents of her pockets. If she didn't have enough money to buy the potions that they needed, she should just use some of her own funds. Now side note, we later find out that this right here is her so-called beloved fiancé. This is the way that he treats her and he's not the only one. Leovana, while gulping down her drink, also makes fun of Edda for being so slow. And on a side note, as we later find out, Leovana is actually in love with Avera. Maybe there's even an affair going on right under her nose. Who knows, not our Edda, that's for sure. She just, she takes the abuse and even apologizes. She came as fast as she could, had tried to haggle with the merchants, but two potions was the best it was gonna give her with the money that Avera had given her. She had no idea how expensive they were. Clearly, they're not the most experienced party out there. Pio Rayo also pipes up, saying that this mission would be perfect for their inaugural outing as a party. The beginning of a lifelong journey together, as heroes, wandering around caves, turning over a few rocks. This was going to be their start. How difficult could their first mission possibly be? Oh yeah, yeah we can limit break. Hit the button, limit break. Woo! Yay! <laughs> cool. Got an achievement for that. Yay! We did it, team. First dungeon has been completed. We take care of business. And then we're asked to venture into the Tamtara Deepcraft. Death has become an ever more occurrence without a fraternity of late. Times being what they are, the guild is just constantly inundated with petitions. And we're hard-pressed to find enough hands to deal with all of them. Well, this means that there's no shortage of work for able souls such as ourselves. It also provides ample opportunity for the inexperienced to overreach, with predictable consequences, as if to illustrate the points. Uh-oh. Avery's gone, and it's all your fault. If I hadn't taken you, if it hadn't taken you with H to heal him, he would still be alive. Oh shit. Oh shit, the whole party died? Is this like Goblin Slayer? Is that what I need to imagine? But I tried. He bolted out of range before I could finish my spell. He shouldn't have been so hard pressed in the first place. We should have done more to lighten his burden. But to hell's with this pathetic excuse for the party. I'm leaving, and I'd be too soon if I never see your faces again. Goodbye. Good riddance. I'm leaving as well. I doubt this comes as any surprise, but I never liked you. I only suffered you for your healing. But you couldn't even do that one thing right. Cruel though this may sound, you brought this upon yourself. Always blaming the healers. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, and uh, by way of some parting advice. Get rid of Everest's head. Bury it, cremate it, do whatever the hell you like with it, but for God's sake, stop carrying it around. It's, uh, 
It's just, you know, just get rid of it, alright? What the f***? Wait, don't leave me alone! Please! I'm so sorry, Evera. Please forgive me. The healer is being blamed for the tank's death, which happens all the time, right? But here the tank's death, it meant not only the death of her beloved fiancé, the rest of her party, they straight up abandon her. They leave her alone here with nothing but the severed head of Avera to keep her company. Now this is where they could have simply left it. You know, a simple blame it on the healer joke. But this is only the beginning. Leavon would find a way into our headquarters where we can talk to her. You can see that things are not quite right. And this is also where we learn about our love for Avera. Shortly after, she would follow him into the grave. In the meantime, we've also seen Edda again, who wanted to have a word with us before returning to our village. Oh, before I forget, there's a lass here who wants a word with you. Didn't actually know your name, but hearing her description, I knew who she meant right away. Edda, thank you for sparing this time. I realize that you don't know me, but I've been longing to speak with you for a while now. Yeah, as a Koji, the lead of English localization? Okay. My name is Edda. I'm an adventurer like you, though I'm not very good at being one of truth be told. Anyway, I um Wait, are you the one who lost like the tank of your party? Was that a... weren't you the healer? Or did you lose the heal I'm that w that was her. Like she had the head, yeah? His name was Evere, and he and I were to be wet in the spring. Oh shit. You may not remember him, but to say that he remembered you would be an understatement. He would sing your praise from dawn to dusk. He saw you for what you are, you see. An adventurer's adventurer. And swore that he would be like you one day. Well, then he shouldn't have died now, would he? I believe that he would have succeeded had a fiend not robbed him of the chance. Since that day, I have fought long and hard about giving up adventuring. But when I think of the man that you are... Of all that you have achieved, I find that I am inspired, just as Avra once was. And so I've decided to start again as an adventurer. I will go back to the village of my birth and begin my training anew. But I wanted to meet you first, to ask your name. Well, I'm Nobo, Nobo Arara. Ara. Thank you, Nobo Arara. Ara. <laughs> I pray that we will meet again. Again, at face value, you might not consider this dialogue to be that out of the ordinary. It's not the first time that people sing our praises, but remember, we saw the little group before going into Sastasha, and her fiancé, they were pretty pissed at us for taking their work. Would they actually be the ones to start praising us? Or is this more poor Edda's mind making up her own story, her own world as she goes along? Can you really blame her after being abandoned like that? Who knows what she's gone through before she got a chance to chat with us. We can only guess, really. But what we do know is what happened after this. And, oh baby, does this rabbit hole go deep? I finally mustered the courage to speak with your hero, my love. Novo is as kind and wise as he is brave and strong. He listened attentively as I told him all about you. About us. Though he is a man of few words. Or perhaps because he is. Everything he said seemed to inspire me. Why, his gaze alone instilled me with a confidence I never knew I had. Truly, I feel better prepared to face the future for having met him. How right you were, my love. And then some more journal notes are found. Journal notes taken after she meets with us. Again, with the whole praising while being dead. Now this would be the first note, which means presumably all of this happens with her fiancé being nothing but a decapitated head. Please keep that in mind as we read further into Edda's adventures. Scarcely a week has passed since we returned to the village, and already I cannot help thinking it was a mistake. There was a time when this place seemed just large enough, but having seen the wider world, it all feels so insufferably confined that I often find myself struggling for breath. I know that it's the same for you, my love. Being decapitated and all that. The only time I feel truly alive is when I'm adventuring with you. We are as caged birds in this backwater. So long as we remain here, we will never spread our wings and soar. So let us take to the road and create a lifetime of wonderful memories together. I could not have hoped for a more romantic first visit to Mordona. The crystals that pierce the landscape 
glowed in all their majesty as if to celebrate our future together. And as we lazed by Silver Tear Lake, watching the waves lapping at the shore, the sun took its leave behind the horizon that we might enjoy a moment of intimacy, whatever that might entail with a decapitated head. I want us to be together forever. You first said those words to me years ago, and you said them to me again tonight. I am so happy to be with you. But all this traveling around, listening to whispers that aren't exactly there, it doesn't do the heads with nobody any favors. As we read, you've been looking deathly pale of late. The scorching heat of Tanelan does not agree with you. Ah, you were never fond of hot climbs. It was a mistake to come here. Let us make the kurtas, where the bracing air will put roses on your cheeks. That's not being enough to do the job, considering that she's literally carrying a decapitated head. Edda comes up with a new plan, providing her beloved with a brand new body. Now, it would be easy enough to get just ordinary corpses for him, as ordinary adventurers, they die often enough, but nah 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 nah, that won't do. She wants his body to be like us, and to make that happen, they can't settle for anything less than extraordinary. A strong body requires an equally strong soul, which are rare, but never fear, they can create one themselves. All they need is plentiful supply of the weaker kinds, and those are common indeed. Within the Tum Tara Deepcroft, she does her thing. Experimentations, rituals, she even tries out her necromantic abilities on Levan. It's, it's quite a gruesome scene, one we get to witness, as she's been inviting people over for her wedding, including Payo Rayo. Uh-oh. Is it wedding time? What have you done? Did you forget to get him a body? Look, Aver. All these people have come to make you a gift of their souls. Isn't that kind of them? Even Noble is here. Now your dream of becoming like him can come true. They were a bit confused to hear that their old party members were getting married, though. Especially since... You know, one of them is supposed to be dead. That's a breadcrumb guiding us in there, showing up just as Edda wanted. And of course, we put a stop to all the madness. What? What have you done? Affair? No! Uh oh. Um, your dress is on fire. Um... In her final moments, she almost seems sane again. Happy that we put her out of her misery. And while the victory fanfare does play, there is no celebration to be had. And again, they could have ended it here, but they didn't. It's finally over. Would that I could have been different. But what choice did we have? Let this be my last act as an adventurer. I've done quite enough harm as it is. I mean to go home and live in my days in, uh... Huh? No. It, it, it can't be. <gasps> oh, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. The plot thickens once more, as Edda's soul is claimed for the Palace of the Dead. This is a place where the rooms are ever-changing. You get upgrades and you try to go as high as you can. Now we're also dealing with beings from different video games, which have made their way into Final Fantasy XIV. Now eventually, to keep it focused on Edda, we do put her spirit to rest. At long last, with just one final kick in the heart, as we realize that her so-called beloved fiancé 
They couldn't even bother to keep an eye on their engagement ring, but that's neither here nor there. Point of the story is that even the small things, stuff that you could just walk by or miss completely in your playthrough, they can end up playing quite a part within the MSQ. And I thought that that was worth sharing. I thought that this story, it was so cool to hear Chad talk about it. And then, like I said, I've been diving into this and more and more information has come to the surface. I really wanted to share it with you all. Hope you enjoyed. And until next time, see ya!